In recent years, a lot has changed in the global film and TV industry. The era of streaming media promises an ocean of products. You can just sit on your couch and let the stories take you anywhere. Great works are more accessible. Women are playing more leading roles. How will these changes shape the future cinematic landscape? How can Chinese film and TV shows gain a stronger global presence? China Daily invites award-winning screenwriter Jeff Graham to share his golden rule on storytelling. Graham is best known for the Danish TV drama Borgen. The show tells a story of a minor female politician who rises to become the first female prime minister of Denmark. It enjoyed worldwide acclaim and won the BAFTA Award for the Best International Series. In your mind, what are the most important quality to make a good screenwriter? I think it's very much. I mean, you have to. Have, of course, you have to have a lot of imagination. But 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 for me, it's almost more important that you are able to to empathize with other people, that you understand other people, and then you understand their psychology, that you understand what really. Uh, takes place inside them, and uh, also all the things they don't say. So you have really to understand uh, people. Uh, I think <laughs> on a very deep emotional level.、Mm -hmm. So it's to create a new world. Create a new world and create new people,、uh, and and those people have to be credible. Just like if they were you or me,、uh, people that you meet, you have to believe in them so much. Yeah, I think so. Let's talk about the female characters、yes. in the TV shows. Because I noticed something in recent years, there are more and more distinctive female roles、yes. in TV dramas and also films. For example, like、uh, Gone Girl and、mm -hmm. the marvelous Mrs. Maisel,、mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And you yourself have depicted、uh, a lot of intriguing female characters. And based upon your experience, and how would you approach a female character?、Uh, any difference from a male role? No, and I think that's the key element that you should never treat a female character different than a male character. Women are just as much capable of being the protagonist in their own life. They, 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 they all know that. You, you know that. It's, 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 it's just the same as being a man. And for so many years in films and TV,、uh, female characters has been treated like secondary, and I think that's completely crazy because there's so many great stories. To tell about women, and then it's—I mean, I, I just consider myself lucky at the moment that I live in a time where suddenly you can tap into this great area、uh, of inspiration, that you, and you can show strong, interesting, very active female characters on TV and film. I think that's very, very interesting. One of the main characters in the third season of, of Follow the Money, the TV show I just finished, uh, uh, she's a mature woman. Uh, in her late 40s,、uh, and、uh, she could even have been older, but but that was the kind of woman we wanted to portray,、uh, and she's not portrayed as any kind of sex symbol or anything like. That. She's just an active protagonist, and I enjoy writing her so much, and I enjoy working with that actor very very much. She's so talented. I'm looking forward to watching yes. it. Yes. <laughs> and、uh, and so talk about your previous、um, production, um, Borgen. Yeah. Borgen is a TV show in Danish. Right,、yes. and、uh, it still enjoys a very impressive viewership worldwide, and many Chinese people have seen it too and liked it.、Yeah. My question is: the Chinese TV and the film industries are now looking for a stronger global presence.、Mm -hmm. From your、uh, experience, you are a storyteller,、mm -hmm. you are a showrunner, and so how do you think that Chinese TV shows or films can make a content that resonates internationally? I think it's very much about writing、um, your own stories, not trying to copy、uh, American stories or European stories. But really, the thing that worked in Denmark, at least, is very much that when we stop trying co to copy the American stories and try stop trying to tell crime, crime serial stories all the time, just like the Americans, and started focusing on on original stories. That took place in Denmark, and were very specific to Denmark and to Copenhagen, the capital of Denmark. Some of them, like Borgen,、uh, then they started to travel abroad. Then people were interested because then we sh they sh we showed them a world they did not know, and, and that seemed 
interesting and credible and they wanted to try to for a brief moment explore that world live in that world and i think that's very much our secret so my advice would be that you go uh, you, you go global by staying local in your story I like that expression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's like dig, dig deeper into your own society, yes. your culture, and to find that authenticity. Yes, exactly. Yes. Tell stories with mm -hmm. great authenticity in your own world, uh, and then they will travel. You have been to China this how many times? Only once before. This is my second time. So, uh, what's your impression about Chinese TV or film? Any particular production? I mean, I've seen, uh, you know, the big stuff like Hero or, or, or Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon and those kind of movies and I like them very much. I actually, just today I realized I've seen too few. I want to explore the Chinese culture and I want to uh, uh, very much also explore the Chinese cinema and TV series. I'm very curious to meet uh, the Chinese TV series creators. Which aspects of Chinese culture would you like to introduce to your friends at home? I love history. I'm a big history buff, so so I'm very so I, I look very much forward to to seeing the historic places of uh, of Beijing in the coming days and uh, and explore all that and uh, I like I like the fact that that you have such an ancient history and that it's so so deeply rooted for thousands of years. We don't have that. I mean, in, in Europe, we have maybe 1,000 years or, or so and, and other places. But the fact that you have such an ancient history and that, 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 that the Chinese soul in that sense has developed over so many centuries. I'm very fascinated by that and also by the fact that, that so many new things are happening at the moment, also with culture and with art and in this area. I did not know that. It, I don't think it existed when I was here last time. I want to explore this area. So I'm very curious about both the ancient parts of the Chinese culture and also all the new art that, are, that is happening here. It's a very interesting fusion yes. of the two. Yeah. Do you think that film and TV shows are significant in uh, facilitating cross-cultural communication? Very much, I think. In Denmark, we watch a lot on Netflix it's, uh, streaming, and uh, and it's it seems like at the moment people are watching uh, TV series from everywhere and in other uh, languages. And and it used to be that people mostly watched. English language TV series in Denmark and of course some Danish language TV series uh, and a few others but now people watch uh, French shows, Italian shows, Slovenian shows from shows TV series from everywhere and, I th and, I, and I'm waiting for, 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 the, for the next big Chinese show to hit <laughs> Netflix or wherever I can see it. I think it's absolutely brilliant for, for telling stories to people worldwide and I think with with the advent of streaming instead of just regular TV stations, it, it makes it so accessible to so many people. Uh, so I, I think really it will spread out culture throughout uh, the whole world.